What's the deal, my people? You know it is Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you another one. And the most anticipated show in quite some time, The Last of Us, has finally made its debut. I'm a huge fan of this show. I played the game, the remastered version, and truly was one of the most cutting edge and groundbreaking games of its time. But does the HBO show do this justice? That is what we're here to find out. I'm going to break down everything that we see in it. I'm going to get any easter eggs that we got from the game i'll tell you that and anything that won't spoil the ending for you i will not do that for you so you have nothing to worry about let's get right into it the series starts out in 1968 and gives us a fully fleshed out version of this virus that the virus is actually a fungus this is not what happened in the video game in the video game we see sarah she's in her bed and she wakes up and that's how it starts scientists talk about cordyceps and how if global warming happens and the temperature starts to rise it could mutate and start to affect human beings the scientist talks about how there will be no cure no nothing that can help humanity to survive which is eventually why ellie is so important because we see she has been infected she tests positive for it but she does not turn to a clicker I know we just started, but if you can and you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video, the algorithm likes it, I'll be doing weekly live streams that you can call in and discuss this show with me. Let's continue. The show opens and shows us how the life was before the pandemic through the eyes of Joel's daughter, Sarah. She has a mission to get a watch fix for her father for his birthday. Connecting this to the video game, they gave the actress who's playing Sarah the same exact t-shirt that she had in the video game. How they switched it up was that they gave her a backpack. Backpack is very important in the game. They use it for an inventory system and this is what Ellie has trying to connect the two characters. Now when we meet Joel, he's just turned 36. Later on we see him at 56. I think the makeup team did an exceptional job aging him up. An easter egg for the video game at this scene is a soccer ball and a guitar. Joel is an avid guitarist and Sarah was on the soccer team. The guitar is later going to come into play dealing with Ellie, but I won't spoil anything. Let's move on. We then get introduced to Tommy, who is a major character in the video game. is going to play a major role. We see that him and Joel are working together and on the radio we hear the first stages of this outbreak taking place. This is the time we meet the neighbors and in the video game the first infected sign that we get from playing it is from the neighbors. They're not old people but this time I think it does it better than the video game because it makes it understand that these people especially when you look at the grandmother who can't move out of the wheelchair she can barely get food down her throat is the one who goes buck wild and starts killing everybody. Sarah goes out and she tries to get her father's watch fix, which she does, but at this time we see the storekeeper's wife come down and shut down everything. You can tell that stuff is going on, there's a lot of cops presence, we hear things flying overhead, we know something's going on, but she doesn't know exactly what, but the shopkeeper's wife tells her, you should go home as fast as you can. Sarah then goes to the neighbor's house as she promised when she got back she starts making cookies with the neighbor and then we see grandma in the chair and she starts shaking now either she's got the virus or she's got the holy ghost something's going on the dog is freaking out and Sarah leaves the house. Joel then runs into his daughter at the house, she gives him his birthday gifts, which is the fixed watch, and they also watch a DVD where she falls asleep on his lap. After this, he receives a phone call that Tommy's been arrested, so he has to leave and try to get this man out of jail. Carry Sarah up to the bedroom, and this is when everything starts to fall off the rails. Sarah wakes up sometime early in the morning and she hears the dog barking from the neighbors. She grabs the neighbor's dog, brings it across the street, and when she does, the dog does not want to go it runs away now in the video games the people who don't have all the fancy equipment they use dogs because dogs can smell the infected people so that's what they use them for so that's why this dog knew what was going on and bounced out of there now she goes inside the house and she sees grandma eating up everybody she runs out the house her father is waiting out there the old lady tries to come and he hits her right in the head with a monkey wrench killing her they jump in the truck and they start heading out after they run into a roadblock and make their way through town sarah gets injured joel has to carry her he gets chased by some clickers after that the clicker gets shot dead by a military officer 
Fearing that they both have the virus, the military officer is instructed to shoot them dead, but he gets shot, but he does let off a shot, and this shot hits Sarah. And everything that we see is straight taken from the video game. Every dialogue that we hear is straight taken from the video game. And then after this, we flash forward 20 years in the future. Starts off with a little girl making her way to the Fedra camp in Boston. After she is brought inside, they see that she is infected. They lie to her and tell her they're going to give her something good. And after they give her this medicine, she, they're going to give her ice cream. Later on, we see that she has been killed and it was just a drug to kill her. And that Joel's new job is to dispose of these bodies that have been killed, infected into the fire pit in one of these camps. Joel also does other side jobs to make money. Money, but, his, but his main job is that of a smuggler. We see that when he gets some pills and he shares it with the officer for rations. Now while in this camp, we see red symbols on the wall, which means the Fireflies, which is considered a terrorist group, but they really want to stop the military rule that's going on inside of these camps show us how much control they have over these people inside the QZ. They show these people who have left about to be hanged in front of everybody just like medieval times or should I say back in the early 1900s when they did things like this. Then get introduced to Tess who's getting beat up by two guys. She has a plan to get a battery from but the guy double crossed her but he doesn't want to let her go because he's afraid of Joel and Tess is Joel's new girl right now. So He's upset, he don't know what to do, but eventually she does convince him to let her go and say that Joel will do nothing about this. After this, we get our first introduction to Ellie. We see her chained up and she's being observed by one of the Firefly's doctor and they're trying to make sure that she is not going to turn into a clicker. Again, she has been bit and she has not turned. It has been over two weeks and she does test positive, but something in her blood is preventing this disease from taking hold. The next important scene is meeting Marlene. You see her, she's the leader of the Fireflies in this group. They have a map on the table and they're plotting attacks, but instead she's saying, listen, we're going to take Ellie and we're going to leave. We're going to get her out of here. No one knows exactly why, but they just follow her orders at this particular time. The one girl who doesn't, she shows her a piece of paper, which most likely tells her that who Ellie is and she jumps on board to get this done. Joel and Tess go across the subway to try to get back the battery that was stolen from them. The people who double crossed them while down there, they find an infected body pinned up against the wall. When they get upstairs, they can't get through the door because there's a dead body there. And all the people who double crossed them has been killed. And that's when they run into the fireflies. And it was them that they were trying to sell a bad battery to. So the guy tried to double cross them both and wind up getting killed for it. Down the hall, we see Marlene, who's been injured in the fight, and she says, listen, if you take this girl, use her as cargo, think of her as cargo, take her out there, not only will you get a battery, we'll do you one better, we'll get you a whole truck so you can go off and find your homeboy, and that is where they agree to do it, and they take Ellie, and this is where it really starts to jump off, and how the show is going to be moving forward. Later on that night, they try to smuggle her out, but they get bagged up by the cop that Joel was selling pills to. But the guy's not having it. He puts them all on their knees and he checks them to be infected. When he does, it realizes that Ellie is infected. Joel has a flashback of his daughter. He beats this guy to death. After that, Tess is like, what's going on? She shows him, tells him, it's been three weeks since I've been bitten and I am not going to change at all they don't believe her in the beginning but the alarm goes off so they go through the fence and they escape and after that we hear a song from Depeche Mode never let me down again we found out earlier in the episode that they use this as a signal device for smuggling and 80s music means that there's danger along the way Overall, I thought it was a solid number one episode for the season. I am looking forward to seeing the rest of it. A lot of video game adaptations suck, but this one seems like they got it right and they're doing a great job. I will go into more spoilers during a live stream. Again, if you want to catch a live stream, make sure you subscribe and click that bell. It's a call-in live stream, so you can call in and give your opinion on The Last of Us. And I'll be back next week with another one of these reviews, but I'll drop three videos this week talking about spoilers and everything that 
I think is going to happen. Also, pregame show every Sunday at 7.30 to 9 p.m. We're going to talk about it. And if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up to spread this across the realm. And of course, subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy.